Hello, welcome to All About Kids, a program focusing on the interests of children and young people and some of the issues affecting them. Our guest today is Alice Pollock, State Public Relations Chair of the Minnesota State Daughters of the American Revolution. This organization is especially interested in fostering an awareness of American history and good citizenship in young people. At the local and national levels, the Daughters of the American Revolution sponsor essay and poster contests and award scholarships. The DAR also supports several schools in different parts of the country which serve students with special needs. Today, Ms. Pollock will, de will be describing some of the many ways the DAR is involved with young people. Alice, it's a pleasure to have you here with us on All About Kids today. Oh, it's nice to be here, Gretchen. And you are the state chairperson for the Minnesota Daughters of the American yes. Revolution, yes. publicity that's director. Right. That's right. And we're going to be talking about some of the programs that the DAR does, particularly in conjunction with young people. But let's start out by talking about your really successful poster contest. Oh, yes. Um, we're celebrating in 1991. We're celebrating the fifth and final year of the Bicentennial of the Constitution. Now, they've had a different theme each year, and this year it was the Bill of Rights. So, of course, the topic of the uh, poster contest, and children ages 8 to 13 were eligible. But we had three winners, Faith Vetris, Number one. This is our first prize winner. That's uh -huh. a beautiful poster. A lot of hard work went into that. A lot of imagination. And the second prize winner. The yes. second prize was Christina Elgard. Uh, now, I believe these were all done by children ages 11. So that would be about fifth grade. Uh, about fifth grade, mm hmm. And these are all students in the, uh, in the Richfield students. Elementary School? These were in the Richfield Elementary. Um, all the prize winners are from, are from Richfield. We, there were some private schools, but we, there was trouble choosing. The judges just could not decide. There were about, oh, 40 to 50 posters. And then the third prize was uh, won by Liz Bishop, and uh, after that, they went down. When the students worked on these projects, did someone from the DAR go into the school no. and talk to them about no, the Bill of no, Rights? Or no, not at all. Um, I think that the interest was stimulated. Oh, the, the uh, poster contest was advertised in the paper. And this particular teacher, I think, stimulated the interest among the children. And uh, you, need that ki you need that kind of enthusiasm for them mm -hmm. to become active. Well, of course, then, the, excuse me. Uh, go ahead. But afterwards, uh, these winners were given a reception by the children of the American Revolution over at the Dupuy House and received their monetary prizes. Of course, that's, that's always a big thing. And, but actually, this contest was just part of Constitution Week, which is September 17th to 23rd. Now, back in 1956, Congress introduced into law a resolution making that week, September 17th to 23rd, as Constitution Week, because September 17th was the day the Constitution was signed. And so ever since, the President of the United States signs a proclamation, as do the state governors and most mayors. It's a good photo opportunity for mayors, oh, you, you know. But uh, DAR is particularly interested because we introduced the original resolution to Congress. And we always like activities that stimulate the minds of young people. After all, the Constitution is, is the cornerstone of our existence. And when they can learn and develop themselves, 
they they can achieve what's known all over the world as the bill the bill right the uh, American dream. Well, the the daughters of the American Revolution are a venerable organization, and we don't hear very much about them now, particularly in Minnesota. How did you get involved? Why are you a DAR? Well, I'm a DAR. Well, number one, members of my family were DARs. Uh, two of my aunts, and then we have a bound book of the genealogy of our family, which goes way back to way back into the 1700s, so that I belong to organizations uh, earlier in existence than the American Revolution. So, um, But to be a member, you have to be able to show that someone in your family actually oh, fought oh in yeah. the American Revolution. Oh, yes. Either that or that they gave support in some way or other. And there is an auxiliary group called Children of the American uh, Revolution? Yes. Uh-huh. There is a group called Children of the American Revolution. Now, I believe that began in about 1795, and I think it's great for children because they mature at a very young age. They learn public speaking ability because they're running meetings mm -hmm. according to Robert's Rules of Order at a very young age. And I, I'd say in general, it helps them grow to be responsible citizens. However, they are very active in patriotic and environmental programs, particularly the latter. Because uh, as DAR is too, areas. excuse me. Well, I think that's it's interesting that DAR is sort of expanding beyond the whole American history idea into tackling some of the subjects that are really important to well, citizens now. Well, well, see, this has gone on ever since DAR was in existence. Uh, Minnesota is not one of the bigger states that has DAR. In fact, it's probably one that has the fewest members. So uh, probably the public is not as aware of the really good things that they do. That would well, be my it was best. interesting for me to hear some of the things you're talking about. You do youth scholarship programs. What does a young person have to do to get a DAR scholarship? Oh. Well, you have need, don't need to have any connection with the DAR. Uh, the best and largest scholarship is in American history. And that is given to a senior who will major in American history at a college or university. And the amount of 8000 is given to the school in increments of $2,000 each. So this is every year one this student in Minnesota year. gets an $8,000 scholarship? Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, people will be rushing to the phone oh, to oh, contact yes. you. Well, uh, you you have to be you have to have a certain grade point That's average, right. and letters of recommend. I mean, uh, there are a few, there are some a few sure. qualifications too. And this is the DAR's way of stimulating an interest in American oh, history oh, yes. and making sure that that uh, oh, yes. students will go on and major mm -hmm, to be mm -hmm, teachers or mm -hmm. whatever. What uh, offhand do you and remember then, any of the uh, topics that some of the students have written about in the last couple of years? Oh well, uh, for the scholarship, there is no contest about writing, writing anything. That is the, the that they major in American history in college, but there are other contests where they do write. There is, uh, for instance, the uh, American History Contest, which is for the fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth grades. And um, whatever participating school, um, they write these essays, and the subject changes each year. This year, it's women in the revolution. So I'd say there should be some interesting reading. I would think so, something more than Molly Pitcher, uh, oh, 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 yes, yeah, something more than Molly Pitcher. But really, I'm always amazed at their, at their research. And I was thinking of, um, Oh, one essay, uh, I don't know, boy or girl, or the, the topic was to write about two people who were important in the revolution besides Washington. 
So one chose Baron von Steuben, a German volunteer, and he gave our soldiers the only military training that they ever had in, in the cold winter weather at Trenton, New Jersey. And he was appalled at the conditions of our men, the living conditions. In fact, I recall his mentioning a sentry who was standing on his hat to keep his bare feet from freezing. But the men all just loved him. And of course, Washington was very, very grateful. And another man he wrote about was Count Rochambeau, who brought 5,000 men over from France. And they landed in Massachusetts and wintered there. Then in the spring, they drove, so they drove wa uh, marched south to meet Washington. And Washington was so embarrassed because he thought he'd have 8,000 men, and he had only 3,000. But they kept on going, and over the period of time, Rochambeau paid our soldiers twice out of his own money. However, I think the French have been well repaid. I would think so. Wasn't there something on the news not too long ago in the early winter of 92 about a family that was hoping to get something from the United States government because uh, an ancestor of theirs had loaned oh, Washington could some money? Yeah, I don't really know the, I don't really, I didn't it's read that story, but that's very possible. But the kind of topics that the students work on are things that do get them excited about little known aspects. Oh, oh, of, oh yes. Do, the, in, in the contest, do they need to concentrate on the revolutionary time or can they pick another period in American uh, history? This is primarily uh, well, yes, I'd say that it's usually done on um, that time, although now there's a good citizenship program, and that is for the seniors in participating schools. Now there, the teachers choose three students that are high academically, that have leadership ability, and they're active in um, extracurricular activities. And then the student body uh, uh, votes on whoever they think is the most deserving. So it is a democratic process. Oh, 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 oh yes, it is. The so then the winner uh, fills out a questionnaire by the DAR and does write an essay. And um, what was I going to say? Yes, the topic of these essays is always the same. Our American heritage and our responsibility to continuing it. Now there are state prizes and area prize and national. Mm -hmm. uh, the state prize in, in different states vary. In Minnesota, it's part of the interest fund from a Mariah Sanford scholarship and I believe the amount will be approximately 750 this year, which isn't bad. No, it's certainly something that's And then should be the okay. national winner gets a $5,000 scholarship. The second prize is 2,000, and the third is 1,000. So for just being a good kid, that's pretty good. <laughs> that is. I, it's, it's very interesting. I think sometimes we stereotype an organization like the DAR and think it's conservative and focusing only on the past, but the fact that you are working with young people to make sure that they not only become more uh, aware of their history, but also that they do something to maintain oh, the yes. citizenship a and rights believe, and responsibilities. I believe you did mention uh, scholarships. Mm -hmm. And yes, yeah, oh no, we, we talked about, we didn't talk about the nursing scholarship, no, though, did we? No, talk about the nursing scholarship. Well, there, there is one. There's an American, uh, Carolyn Holt Educational Fund. And the nursing scholarship is available to any man or woman for his first year in nursing school. And of course, the amount varies, again, according to the amount of interest and to the number of people applying. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, there also is a scholarship for medical and occupational therapy. 
Now this is chapter contributions to a national fund. And there again, your amount is going to vary about how mm -hmm. much they have each year. But you, it's occupational therapy, physical, art, or history. Art or music, I mean. So that's worthwhile, too. Lots of opportunities. And then, uh, well, there, there's still another that goes to a person who is already in school in his junior year if he is taking American history, economics, or political science. So 1000 is paid to him that year and his senior year. So well, that the, really encourages a whole yes. exciting field of uh -huh. study. Uh, as public relations chairperson for the Minnesota DAR, you must do a lot to get the entire community involved. And I was interested in your handouts that oh. the, the local well, grocery stores, Lunds and Byerly's. I yes. thought this was terrific. Uh, Lunds reproduced this and put it into all of their grocery sacks during Constitution Week. Uh, and they did it in green and cream. Byerly's did it in brown and cream. And I just think that was marvelous of them to do. Then, well, again, to emphasize that the Constitution yes, is a living document, that, that's, that it's not just something that's, that happened that's right. in the past. That's the importance of, of Constitution Week each year, of celebrating it. And we really try to do everything possible. Uh, on this, um, businesses donated thousands of these. Businesses like Payne Weber, mm -hmm. Kinko's, and Palm Industries. And we distributed those into schools and to libraries. And we made, uh, or there is a poster here somewhere. <clears throat> we made. 25 of this size posters and some larger. And these were put into libraries and bank lobbies. Uh, Richville State Bank did a beautiful job. So did the uh, library on York and downtown. Those were the biggest yeah, displays. Uh -huh. um, at Richfield, they looked and found a special large glass cabinet, whatever. And it was a huge poster and it just fit. And it really looked stunning as you walked into the bank. And then they used their moving sign above the building mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, stating uh, the message of Constitution Week, as did Norwest Bank over in Lake Street. And people who had public address systems gave announcements. And even some movies had it on their trailers. So, I mean, we really have gotten a lot of publicity. And you'll notice on that uh, handout, uh, there is a coupon there, which uh, will give to the sender a pocket-sized... Oh, a pocket-sized copy, pocket copy of the Constitution. And they had a lot of them, and they were... I think that was the most important thing they grabbed it for. but. I mean, that gives, generates more knowledge about the Constitution. Absolutely. Instead of it being something that we heard about or we learned heard about, about in school. We know that it's, it's someplace on a dusty shelf or whatever. It's the excitement and certainly politically and socially we hear a lot about the First Amendment, a lot about oh, the yes. Second Amendment. Oh, yes. And for people to have the background on the entire Constitution, what are the plans for next year? Well, I'm not going to be public relations director, ne uh, chairman next year. So Somehow I, don't, I think you'll be involved, I, though. Won't I, you? don't, I don't know that I'll be involved. But one thing, um, well, each year, DAR has been at KSTP and been able to give a message uh, about it. A on, public service on, announcement. On, uh, yes, on good thing, company. Yeah. Oh. And then we have uh, we attend the mayor's signing of the proclamation. As I said before, it's a great photo opportunity. And both, both mayors were most gracious. So um, we usually there are about five people go. And this year, we were especially fortunate. We had a proclamation sent to every town in the state. 
That's never been done before. And, and that, that was just your local DAR? That, no, this was courtesy. <coughs> It was my idea, <laughs> but it was done courtesy of the Minnesota League of Cities. So you do a lot of cooperating with other groups. What do you work with organizations like the American Legion? No, or the, no, uh, not really. League of because Women Voters. It's the Constitution Week is special to DAR. I know of no other organization. See, our our interests are patriotic. Uh, educational, historic, mm -hmm. and great. We've done a lot of things in the vi environmental uh, programs. And nursing, yeah, back in, well, let's see, the War of 1812, they supplied a, a thousand nurses. And they the e DAR? Well, they stimulated the interest, got, uh, stimulated the interest, and they paid these nurses pensions for the rest of their lives. And during World War I and II, they gave over their administration buildings to, as daycare centers for working women. So, I mean, we've been involved so working in Working sort of quietly behind oh, the scenes oh, for yes. all sorts of... And then, oh, we gave a terrific amount, I think 750,000 or something, in the Ellis Island restoration. Mm -hmm. That's uh, the new museum on immigration. Yes. Well, mm -hmm. and I was interested, we were talking before the program started about uh, the DAR in 1921 started giving copies of the Constitution. Uh, well, or no, these were the citizenship manuals, uh, the information that you learned to become a citizen. And I wonder how many other people could pass it. Probably uh, not. We have them probably. in the library, and I've looked at them. <laughs> <laughs> They're pretty tough, you need a right? They, course. Yeah, yes. yes. But the but DAR was the sole we distributor the of the sole until distributor, very and that meant, oh, I'm sure. I, I hate to say a figure because I don't honestly remember it. Uh, but in the last couple of years, or three, uh, the number of immigrants coming in is is so terrific that we couldn't possibly afford it. But you see, we've spent thousands but of dollars in scholarship. It, we started that, yes, it. That's that right. And incidentally, it's the um, what do they call it? The uh, oh, the organization that gives the citizenship ceremonies now. They try to be, give a uh, have a big um, day on September seventeenth. Uh, because that is called Citizenship Day, uh, the first day of Constitution Week. And this has been made a great deal of for a good many years. But we have cooperated with them. And we used to give a tea to uh, every time there was a, um, a group of new citizenship, citizens brought in. And it was, it was very impressive to see these citizens. I'm sorry they've changed it, but... Well, the groups are large. They're well, so large. So you think, looking to the future, that the Daughters of the American Revolution will continue to be a lively and viable oh, organization? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The problem is uh, so many women are working. They don't have the time for any organizations, not, not only DAR, but uh, it's amazing the interest. About a third of our membership are younger women. Uh, they came in before age 35, and that is great. In fact, the DAR has a tremendous department for genealogy. Uh, I'd say it's uh, the second largest genealogy li library in, in the country. And in fact, it was the DAR who introduced Alex Haley to it. He was, oh, on, really? he was on the step wondering where to go to the library, and she directed him, and then, of course, it went on from there. But um, they do genealogy for um, Indians um, who had fought, and there were 5,000 blacks. Fighting in the American in Revolution. In the American Revolution. Now, just where they came from, I, that I don't know. But uh, they were there, and they're doing genealogy so that more black women can become members of DAR. 
Well, that's exciting. Alice, I've enjoyed having you on mm -hmm. the program today and certainly learned a lot that I didn't know about the Daughters of the American Revolution. Well, it was nice to be here, Gretchen. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Alice Pollock of the Daughters of the American Revolution, and thanks to all of you for joining us on All About Kids. Please tune in again. This has been a presentation of Hennepin County Library in conjunction with the Twin Cities Metropolitan Library Service Agency. We thank you for watching and we hope you visit your public library often.